What's going on, man? We back. Another episode of the Man and Man Pod. Um, AB, Antoine Bate. Um, as always, man, I got my co-host. Wait, I thought it was Antonio. Wait. <laughs> Antonio? Oh, so we got, we got, we got <laughs> jokes. We got jokes early in the game. Um, got my co-host, D-Butt, D-B. Yes, sir. Um, and today's guest, man, um, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, we have this young man on the show, man. Mm. And uh, again, man, he 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 played the game. He's been called young man in a while, huh? Right, no, right. He, no, he played not. the game. Um, he played the position um, through the times that we've played against each other. I can speak, you know, we've, um, you know, Gained a friendship, you know, a, a genuine friendship. Um, six-time Pro Bowler, uh, two-time first-team All-Pro, uh, yeah. NFL yeah. interception leader in 2011, um, consensus All-American at Utah. I guess we can keep going. Nah, um, two-time, I think. Two-time, I think. Come on, man. Nah, keep uh, going. Keep going, we, man. Uh, what? All-Decade. Um, just announced to the All-Decade yeah. team. Um 40, uh, one of, 40 picks? 30? 30. Yeah. 30, yeah. 30, 30. And um, one of the when he when he lets it grow, when he when he lets the beard grow out, one of the best beards yeah. in the game. No, I see you trying um, to come along, man. <laughs> <laughs> um none other, man. My man nah, Eric nah, Weddle. <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> none other, my man Eric Weddle, man. What's up, man? Man, it's uh it's a pleasure to get on with you guys. Pause and uh, <laughs> yeah. no, you got to do I know, I know. We're old school, man. I've, I've been around these young bucks the last few years, and I can't even carry on two sentences without them checking me. I'm like, yo, man, right. I'm, I'm one right. of the straightest guys you'll ever meet. So you can just cut all that out. Right, uh, right, man. It's just uh, it's good to see people that you love and respect and admire from afar, and like you said, gain the friendship. Uh, over the years, and man, it's just a, it's an honor to be on with you guys for sure. Hey man, our pleasure to have you on, man. Our pleasure. We we gonna jump into it, man, because I know this is gonna yeah. be a good convo. Yeah, um, sure. obviously, obviously, we got a lot of football and a lot of um, you know, your career to talk about. But let's start off with uh, the NBA playoffs. I know you're a big fan of the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, what you think? What you think about what's going on across the whole uh, landscape of the playoffs right now? Yeah, it's 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 uh. It's interesting how they're they're going about it and getting it done. I mean, shoot, they've been in for how long now? A month and a half, and, yeah. and they've been yeah. able to control the health and keep everyone isolated, which I never thought would be possible. But they're doing it, which is which is impressive in itself. And then, you know, it's crazy. It's like it's like you know, we all play hoops in the in the off season. I've been I've been playing in the adult leagues throughout my career, and mm -hmm. man, I swear it's like twenty hour. 24 hour fitness at lunchtime. <laughs> right. You got guys balling that never would have been playing good if the fans are out <laughs> there, the fact, pressure. Yeah. Like it's 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 awesome. I mean it's yeah. it's guys are guys are playing free and it's just it takes it reminds everyone that when when it's live, even though it is live, but it's different when the lights are on, yeah. people are out there, a whole different TV, element. like it's it's just a whole different vibe where guys are are becoming men become yeah. a beast yeah. and you never would have heard of these guys so it's fun it's fun to you know from for just normal people uh giving something to look forward to and you know you got luca playing out of his mind you got the yeah. lakers who the first game forgot how to play and then mm -hmm. they come back and went three in a row and then the sky's falling and you know rightfully so and when uh you know, you're the man with LeBron. You're you're, you're the man. Then Everybody that comes with it. Greatness, yeah. yeah. Criticism comes with it, and you know, I get tired of his uh, his excuses at times and planting <laughs> those seeds. If if he doesn't have a successful run or if he doesn't win the ship, it's like, come on, man, just uh, own the fans it. Weren't there, and this yeah. wasn't that. Yeah, yeah, just just own it, man. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just say everyone's dealing with the same stuff. I don't want to be exactly. hearing none of that. I don't want to exactly. hear none of that. Especially if you're in the goat convo. Yeah, I'm a, big, like, I'm, a, I'm a big LeBron guy, so I, I, I've been defending him for years, and now I know he is. I know in year 17, but I, I still, you know, like you said, that first game you coming out, you got, you know, you got a great stat line, but I got to see yeah. you take over, man. That's what I, I expect. You come you. out if, 10 points, the next thing you're like, come on, man. Yeah, if, come if, on, man. if my teammates aren't making no buckets through a half 
Mm-hmm. Or even yeah. through three quarters. I'm not passing I'm, no I'm more. I'm not passing I'm no more. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. That that's the one game, the one sport that you could take over. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> but that's never has never been and that's why he's that's why he is great. That's why his greatness is what he brings to the other aspects of the game and just yeah. making the right play and all this other stuff. But I'm more of a Kobe MJ type. If I'm building Ooh. a team, I want a killer. I want you know that's who I want, and no, no disrespect. Like I think, I think LeBron's one of the greatest ever. And yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yeah, deny yeah. that. I'm not, I'm not ignorant to that conversation. But if it just baffles me that his mid range and po- low post game in 17 years has never become anything. I, more I than think it's just... gotten better though. It's gotten better. You definitely <sighs> but, evolved. Uh... <laughs> it, it has, but when you when, when okay. you talking when you talking Kobe and MJ, that's a whole that's, that's a, a whole, whole different because yeah, yeah, yeah. that 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 elbow there's both just, of them at the elbow so, is, is 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 some it was some crazy. There's just so many times in the game where he'll get into the paint, he'll get to the elbow, and he's always looking to pass. If he yeah. can't get to the rim, it's like you got a baby jumper. You got as the old Mamba used to say, a bunny. I missed too <laughs> many bunnies tonight. It's like LeBron, you. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. I'm sorry. I don't want you kicking out to Green or Danny Green. or Waiters. I'm sorry. I'd rather you hit that little ten foot baby jumper and live with it and move on to the next possession. But yeah. you know that's just nitpicking uh, yeah. for a guy that that has come in. Geez, probably since 16 had oh, everyone yeah. in the world against him and for him. And has lived up to it. So yeah, he's uh, he's great in all the aspects on and off the court. Uh, you know, you always wish a little more. You always you're always wanting more out of the, of the players that you you think could give more. But mm-hmm. I mean, the man the man is incredible. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, coming in with a Malcolm X book and say you've reading <laughs> it, and then can't really spout out. Much hey, of hey, what you've read spot, so man. far. Hey, I mean, spot. I'm like, come did, on, man. Did you not think that you were going to get asked that? At least, at mean, least pull oh, up the uh, spark I notes. Some, some cliff notes. you seen or, the movie. Like, come hey, on, man. He had to go something. Was, that was not a good look for my dog, man. <laughs> they, it was not they, a good look. They put him on the spot. Shoot. Put him on the spot. It's all good. We all get we all get caught sometimes. No doubt. No doubt. We all get caught sometimes. Yeah, uh, man. for sure, for sure. But I don't know. Like I, I think Toronto, Milwaukee. That's my East. pick out of the East. Toronto's think, coming out of the I East. I think man. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I think Toronto as well. And then, man, the Clippers look off, bro. They look. They look off. They look off. I don't. Yeah. I don't think they're playing well. I think they look slow. I think yeah. they. I, I think I, they'll I figure know. it out though. I mean, they yeah, gotta get past round one. I mean, you gotta yeah. figure it out now. I mean, they they, I, they, they they're gonna figure it out, man. They 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 they, <clears throat> they stepped it up last night. You know. Yeah, but uh, Porzingis was out. Luca's hurt, and he got yeah. one of the Morris brothers trying to take him out in between so, plays. Uh, oh, so, oh, hey, hey, so let's speak let's on that. Right that. <laughs> let's let's speak on that. Let's Which, go right to that. And, and 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 I'm I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking. I'm thinking two ways, right? So I'm like, you know, ah, it was an accident. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he, the Morris, he came out and said, look, yeah. you know, I've been, I've been playing this game for 10 years. I've done it the right way, whatever, X, Y, Z. Yeah. But then the competitor in me is like, okay, if, if I know I'm going into a game <laughs> and I know a quarterback has a, a bum elbow or whatever the case may oh, be, for sure. and I get a chance to hit that elbow, I'm what am I going to do? I'm going to hit it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So what, what what you what you think? What's your honest opinion on that? Um, <laughs> I, I I'm just like you. I go both ways. Like the guys, you know, played for a number of years. Uh, I don't really know the guy uh, watching him play. He's never been on the Lakers, so I don't really know if he's dirty or not. Mm-hmm. It just seems odd. He's one of those guys who he he he, he tethers the line. He's yeah, a tough okay, guy. So I, think, I, think I just think I just think like. Man. In that instance, in that thing, like he had it on his mind. Like, <laughs> don't don't get it don't get it twisted. Like, he either had it on his mind or he was told through someone. Like, look, man, you're a role player. We don't really need you. <laughs> if you get a chance, like, let's go. Like, it's no but, different than a, than a role player in special teams, and they got a stud back there, kick return. Like, yeah, we'll you go put, in there to break you, you put break the wedge up. Back there. Like, yeah, like try to try to try to 
try to hit him as hard as you can. Like, I'm not yeah. saying blow out his knee, but, yeah. yo, when you throw it into that wedge, throw it in there a little bit harder this week. Yes, sir. I mean, that's we've all heard those conversations. That's oh, like, yeah. That's, that's, see, that's right. football, though. That's football. It's physical. It's violent. Yeah. Like, you, you're going to get those hits on. You're going to get those licks on. I don't think – and playing, like you said, we all who – even if you go to step on a guy's foot that's moving and stuff like that's not that's not smart on your end like you can roll your ankle trying to step yeah. on somebody else's so i just I, and, and luca kind of put his foot out last second i don't think he wanted to do that intentional <laughs> man like they, they've been going yeah, back yeah. and forth man like uh, i mean i, I don't I think mean, he tried I mean, his best to avoid it at the same time but yeah at all, all. all i wish all i wish luca would have would have done not even in that play when he hit that game winner I wish you would have said the first comment on the news conference it would have said, hey, Clippers, not bad for a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should have said. Not yeah. playing off. Not yeah. all this other stuff. We should have just ended it right there. Hey, man, that's hey. not bad for a white boy. Hey, yeah. Hey. And, and especially that coming crushed up. Was, was that before or after the uh, the Montrez Harrell? Uh, I think that was after. That, that was, was after. That was after. Yeah. That yes. was after. Yes. Remember they yeah. Remember that pregame? That, that would have been oh, fitting. Man, that would have been that fitting. Been, Very fitting. Been I mean, just, that's, that's just right. That's a badass white boy. I tell you that for, for sure. He, he, he definitely. We man, already knew incredible. about him, but I just feel as though. In the bubble, man, he's just, you know what I mean, taking his, his game to another level. It's kind of one of the things we just kind of talked about with LeBron where he's kind of putting the team on his back without Porzingis. Yeah. And, Got you to. know what I'm saying? He's he doing his thing for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. He's, so he's who, growing, he's growing who, up real quick. Go ahead. Who, who you got right now? Best player in the bubble? Uh, I mean, I, I Dame was out of control. Yep, he, he uh, games and, he'll, he'll be out next game too. Yeah, yeah when I saw it, game. I mean, when I looked at it, I thought ACL for sure. Mm -hmm. Just the the way all his weight was on his leg, and mm -hmm. ho hopefully not. Uh, but I mean, talk about a dude, just the mindset. You know, doesn't give two killer about anybody, and yeah. and wants that wants to respect day in and day out, and. Yep. You know, you just love that. You love that mentality. I mean, we I think we all all were, were players like that, you know, our mentality of always trying to prove ourselves and earn the respect. And and when you get to that point, then then you want to demand respect, like put some respect on what I've done and what, what I'm continuing to do. Yeah, and yeah. he fits that, that bill, book. right? Yeah, he fits sure. that bill. So uh, I think he he obviously was and is uh, in the bubble. Uh you know it's crazy, Giannis. What he did, he, I think they just announced Defense Player of the Year. Yep, yep, and, yep. And, and most likely, I think MVP. I don't know if they announced it yet, but uh, he got to do it. He got to do it on the big stage for me, man. He does. Like he does. And what? And, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's just, a, it's just a, he's growing as a player. But the thing is, is like, you know, he could hit that, you know, three pointer that no one's on him, and and he's got five seconds to shoot the ball, but. That mid range to to outside jumper, like that yeah, that game gotta, where he has to grow and continue because eventually yeah. he's not gonna get to the basket like yeah. he, he yeah. wants to. They he's not like a wall. physical yeah, he's not a physical he's physical, don't get me wrong, but like a a bigger LeBron, like he's year seventeen and still getting to the bucket. So yeah. mm -hmm. I just don't know. Like he's still limited, but I mean the guy is I mean, he, again, he, I'm, he, I'm he, nitpicking. He's a I'm pretty free. I mean, I didn't yeah. know who your best guy is though. Best guy in the league right now. I gotta know this. Well, I got Kawhi. I'm going Kawhi. L.A. Clippers. Kawhi. As Leonard, of right Clark, now, he, so he, he's now. in the he bubble, ain't. not in the league. Yeah. But I'm saying right now, in the league. In I mean, league? league bubble, right? I'm sure it's playoffs right now. I need who you going with right now? I got to go with this guy. I mean, right now, I go with Anthony Davis. He's playing. AD? No, nah, he he too inconsistent for me. Well, I'm talking about he at his best, there ain't no one that can guard him. He and vice versa, him him guarding the the other side. I know who, who you going I, with. I, 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 mean, I, I said I said James Harden. We were talking the bubble. I, yeah. I just thought James Harden was an instant bucket. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I but mean, right, if you're talking right, about the NBA, I mean it's Giannis because he's the MVP. But and, and, I'm, I'll mind. go LeBron, man. I, I still rock with LeBron for real, for real, like. I mean, what what he shit like he he's doing everything everybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you say you say Kawhi. Like I seen my man Luca give that man 
Bump stop, it. Yeah, stop yeah, it. He yeah, gave yeah. him a cut. He, he get off the cut. Look, look what you're playing. We just talked. We just ready a badass yeah, white boy. Yeah, right. I, see, I see Larry Bird yeah, give yeah, MJ and Pippen buckets too from time to time. Right They're happy. Right yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Amazon saw a shoe. We've all been rounded up. Yeah, exactly. It happens to everybody. We all get got. We all get got. It happens to everybody. You're right. You're right. I just know Kawhi, he a cyborg, man. He's not coming out. He's not making excuses. Yeah. No, I love The thing is, you know, you got a little. Uh, no management here and there, but in the playoffs, he locked in. He coming out. You know what you're yeah. going to get from him. You're going to get nah, three-something, probably 10 or 11 why. rebounds and great defense. So I take that night in and night out. Nah, you – I mean, at the end of the day, man, you can't you can't go wrong with – You can't go wrong with – You can't go – you can't go wrong with, you know, Kawhi, Giannis, you know. Um, LeBron. You can't, LeBron, you can't go the wrong. Thing, the thing with LeBron, LeBron and uh, AD, I mean, AD leads that team in – and points, rebounds, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously defensively. Not obviously. LeBron stepped it up defensively this year over the last 10 years. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you watch AD and he's on, I mean, he is. Whew. He, he's scary. He oh, is. my scary gosh. And, yeah. I, and I think for the Lakers to win it, I think they have to. And when it comes down to fourth quarter, they have to run it through AD to slow the game down, get good shots. See, I, I, run, think, run, I think run opposite, the elbow man. The post. I think opposite. I think they don't have a chance to win unless uh, LeBron is – you going through LeBron. You playing like he's – he got to be your best player. I don't think they win the championship if AD is your best player in the playoffs. Uh, I hear – you're tripping on that. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I can't see it. He, he, was, he was the best player in New Orleans forever. They never made anything. I, yeah, and, they, I, and he I'm never had a teammate like LeBron. I'm not so, riding I mean, that wave. I need LeBron to take – I need LeBron to be the alpha. Just like D-Wade came and said, hey, LeBron's here. I got to take – I got to be Robin now. Yeah. Like, that AD got to be good First Robin. championship, who was Batman, Batman though? Who? Uh, uh, LeBron. That go without a doubt. No. no. So you trying to say who? I'm saying when you know, it's fourth quarter time, who who was passing the ball to who? LeBron was passing to D Wade. Wade, Wade, Wade definitely hit shots. I mean, Kyrie hit shots. Shit. Uh, John Paxson hit shots. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Paxson the same as D Wade? No, no, no. I'm just saying we all need somebody. I would say the second championship, you are right, that that it was it was him – Leading the way, but that first championship, yeah. don't discredit Wade and in crunch time. Oh no, when no, the, no, the no, pressure no, shots needed to be made. It never. was Wade doing it. Wade kind and of then, and then LeBron kind of learned the ropes and and figured Agreed. it out and, and and ran the show from there. So, mm -hmm. agree. I know it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be crazy, man. It's gonna be. I just hope you know the Lakers have a tough road. Yeah, they have to get through Portland, Houston, then Clippers, then Toronto yeah. or Milwaukee. I mean that's. Especially healthy. That's rest tough. So, players. so here's the question. Here's the question, because you guys are LeBron guys. I mean, AB. I don't know. I'm a LeBron what guy. Whole, what the whole goat conversation? But if he does, if he does pull this out and wins it, where does that does that it's, give him enough? If you win to, a ring. Yeah. What else am I oh, talking oh, about? Oh, here go. <laughs> yeah. He's the goat. Yeah. He the goat. I mean, he already in the conversation for me, honestly. But if he win this ring, because I feel like. They told me I put an asterisk on this, but I feel like this would be one of the tougher ones to get. Yeah, you, um, especially coming off of what? How many? A uh, two month? Uh, well, yeah. two months, right? Yeah, two month be, break. That, yeah, a long yeah. break. I mean, yeah. but, but that that also is beneficial to a guy like LeBron. Yeah, with, 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 had yeah. months off the, and rest, and then he gets back into it. I mean, I go back and forth with this. May be the toughest. I think it's the toughest because the, the toughest road he has to get through. Yeah. But like the elements and all that stuff. Like, come on. Like, if we're just playing ball. And we don't got no kind of uh, outside interference, family, going out, distractions. It's way easier. So yeah, I don't want to hear see, none of the that, bubble that's, talk. That, that's one no side fans, of it. No yeah, all this other, other stuff. That's one side of it. But we but saw they, uh, with Paul, Paul George. George. Yeah, Paul George talking after the after the game. And we talked about it on the show, like the mental health part of it. It just you know, Everybody going to deal with pandemic and everything differently. Yeah. But now you're I, in a bubble. Paul George is like, yo, I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was out of it. I was because, out in the dark place, et cetera. Like, yeah, no, but is that because it, so. of of where they were, or is that be just because of what's going on in this country and and that affecting them? Like, who know? I mean, I don't know. But I know one thing. As far as like, you could just think of, you can also put in there. Like, I think as as professional athletes, we get used to our routine as well. 
mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, you know, say, you know, you do your thing on a on a Sunday and you get thrown off one Sunday. Shit, that could that could fluster you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So again, yeah. with Paul George not knowing, you know what I mean, what it is, it could, like you said, it could be the state of where we at in this world, it could be him being in the bubble. Um we don't know what it is, but we could just be anything. It could be anything, <laughs> yeah, but we can, we can just see the other side to it where, you know, we yeah. could be like, oh, it's easy, no distractions, you know, whatever the case may be. But in his case, it, it, it's something, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I mean, I'm sure he ain't, he ain't the only one dealing with it. And that's the thing. Everybody going to deal with it different. Everybody yeah. going to deal with that bubble different. But I just think even even so they, they bust their ass all year to get the, the number one seed. And now it don't really mean shit, honestly. <laughs> it's like oh, you playing man, the home court advantage is gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Don't People now. don't have to go out to LA and say, damn, I gotta go steal two <laughs> or steal yeah. one in LA in front of Jack Nichols. You know what I mean? That's big. That's, That's big, big, especially I mean, for a LeBron guy. If if nothing none of this ever happened, like there's no way Dallas gets two games, maybe three out of this. In the Staples series. Center. No, no there's, there's, maybe there's zero chance. Maybe one. So yeah. I don't even think they get one. I don't I don't think they're that good of a team, but Compared yeah. to the Clippers. So, I mean, so it is. I mean, you're totally right. Like, all that stuff in the regular season is meaningless at this <laughs> point. Meaningless. It's, it's yeah. really just who's going to, who's playing the best at, at uh, who's playing the best right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Shoot. We'll shoot, man. Let's shift it, man. Let's shift sure. it, man. We, um, we want to get the, get the, get into your mind, the, 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 the safety, the leader of the, the team, the leader of the defense, man. Obviously, it's, um, Training camp time, you know, teams are out there, you know, they're doing their thing, guys are busting their mm-hmm. butt. Um, I guess we could just dive right into it. The last team that you played with, um, the Ravens, man. And um, obviously you speak highly on the on the Ravens and their organization, what they have over there. Um, obviously we've seen that, you know, <clears throat> they let uh they let Earl Thomas go. Um, how you think that will um affect that uh, that defense um or that or that team over there this 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 season? Yeah, I mean the thing with the thing about the Ravens is is I wouldn't say you you have to fall in line. They want they want you to be you. They want your personality to shine. Mm-hmm. But there also is an expectation that it's it's play like a Raven, right? It's mm-hmm. it's do things right. Uh, no one's bigger than the team. And and you know some teams really some teams say those things, but Baltimore backs that up. And and I think the players in itself monitor that and and keep you keep each other accountable like if a guy's late yeah. to a meeting like we get on them like yo yeah that's not how we do things around here or if you miss something or if you don't show up or like all those things that that happen it it means something in that building in that place and everyone holds their chin up high because that's that's what expected and that's how they separate themselves from everybody else that's the standard and yeah, yeah the standard is the standard and you know, I don't – they're not going to miss a beat because of what they have as a team, uh, the, the, what they're building, what they have built, and the system they run there. I mean, you're not going to replace a guy like Earl, but a lot of the stuff that they did last year were different from what they normally do just because of some things they just couldn't do with him or mm-hmm. he didn't like to do. So uh, – it's going to free up what they what they normally do with all the misdirection and, and blitzing and all this other stuff. It is crazy how how it all went down. Uh, yeah, yeah, especially at this point in the in the off season. I yeah, still, that's just wow. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much you know. I'm still close with a lot of guys, so I know like yeah. everything that went down and what has happened. Yeah. So I mean, and I respect Earl and what he's done, and it's just crazy that. You know, to get in it with a running mate right. and get get in a fight or or punch your teammate for no reason, and, is, and that's is and hard that's for me to. And that was a tough thing for me. Whereas you know, what I mean, and you play the position as well, and we're kind of looked upon as some of the you know the leaders on the team. You know what I'm saying, yeah. or at least on the defense. So for me to get into it, a fist fight with with Bob or um, whoever the case may be. Now we we yeah. might have. A difference of opinion on what we might see on a play or whatever the case may be uh-huh. but like you said to get to that point um it had to be something brewing obviously you know we, yeah. we you know we're not in the building we're not in that huddle obviously we don't know what's going on but it yeah. was you know kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit and um it kind of you know it surprised me from 
from it being Earl, just knowing like, you know, one of the the best safeties to play in our era. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, coming from the Legion of Boom and just how uh they had a tight knit group back there with him, Cam, Sherm, um, you know, and those guys. So it, it was it was surprising to me. But you know, like you like you said, like um they got a standard there. They're not gonna deviate yeah. from that standard. Um, that's what makes that kind of what separates the good teams from the great teams. You know, like you said, guys yeah. holding each other accountable. So for sure. Yeah. I mean, when I first got there, it was, you know, T Sizzle, you know, as big a personality as he is, and everybody knows mm -hmm. it. Yeah. This guy never missed a meeting, never was late to a meeting, and never missed practice. That's that's and, that, that, that's it. and yeah. when you have that as your as the the best player on your team mm -hmm. everyone falls in so i come mm -hmm. in and i'm like shoot this is a perfect spot for me yeah. I, don't, I don't gotta deal with no <laughs> drama i just get yep. in get my work done and then just do what i do and i'll fit right in and work my tail yeah. off and lead and do those things that, that that most guys do but when you don't and you don't back it up it just trickles down and and that affects everybody and there there are times some teams let it go, like yep. yeah. you know Pittsburgh for that matter, right? With yeah. with Antonio they, uh, Brown, like yeah, yeah. they they let it go, they let it go, and they were winning and winning and winning, and then it just becomes too much. It, get, right? it, it always gets to a breaking point. It does, oh, yeah. and and it's tough for other players and young players and older players to see it. Mm -hmm. And regardless if you if if it affects you or not, it does affect a lot of people. That hey, if I'm doing everything right, why doesn't he have to do everything right? Yeah, All right. Man. So so I want to I want to ask you about that. Right. So as a <clears throat> as a young guy in the locker room. Right. So you you have this 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 player um, multiple time, you know, Pro Bowls, whatever the case may be. And they always say, um, you know, young guys follow the older guys. Right. And yeah. like you said, like, you know, you have these older guys that, you know, obviously, you know, it's it's a difference as a rookie. Hey, look, don't be don't be late. You know, every, everything has not, to be not right. Er, not everyone's treated the same, but exactly. Not everyone's treated the same. The head coach isn't going to treat your star player the same as some rookie or first year player that hasn't done nothing. There, there yep. is some leeway in there, but mm -hmm. continue on. So what I'm saying is, so as a young player, you know, you're telling me to look at these older guys, and like you said, you know, everybody's not going to get treated fairly or equally. Um, how do you think? You know, I kind of have my opinion on it but how do you think being in different locker rooms um and if you're not winning obviously if you're winning everybody's like okay we go yeah. we're gonna sweep it under the rug sweep it under the rug but mm -hmm. you know you're not winning how you think that could potentially affect your locker room well it it it, it does affect it whether you think so or not because those guys young guys and and even middle of the road pack or special teams backups, right? Or even the, yeah. even a starter for that matter, right? You may not say anything, but it creeps in your mind, right? And it slowly starts getting at you or eating at you. Whether you want to say something, whether you don't want to say something, you feel like you have enough respect of the locker room to say something or voice your opinion on this just isn't right. And then you don't say anything, and then and then a blow up happens, right? Mm -hmm. And then then the team suffers from that because ultimately you're in this position because one guy is doing his own thing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I just think the teams, right. This was a big deal for the Ravens. Like they, they, they still owed him a lot of money. Uh, mm -hmm. but you have to respect an organization that if something isn't right and they feel strongly about something, then they need to move in a different direction. Maybe. And, whether they get criticized for it or not, they stand by it and move forward. And, you know, you have to respect that. You know, that's nah, one thing don't. about about Baltimore. Like, they are an honest, upfront organization from the top down. Like, my last year, I was going into my last year there, and I met with the GM. And, you know, it came off a good year. Not a bunch of stats, but, you know, mm -hmm. we had a good year. We won the division first time in five years. We had the number one defense in the league. And yeah. This yada yada yada, but I met with the GM. He's like, "Hey, Eric, like, you know, you know how much we love and appreciate you, but we're we may be looking to to getting a little younger and faster in the back end. And mm -hmm. for you to come back, you might have to take a pay cut. And you know, I was like, look, I I think there's probably ten other people that deserve a pay cut before me. <laughs> and yeah. and I'm holding it down, you know, yeah. So 
But, hey, that's what they felt. That's what they believed. And I can respect them. Like, at the end of the day, we just want to be upfront and honest with us. Like, we don't always have to be. Yeah, just if you don't want me or if you don't feel like I'm getting it done, then then that's your opinion. I may not agree with you, but at least I can respect you for being a man and saying to my face. Yeah. And, you know, that's this that's the direction they wanted to go. And and, you know, that's why I still have a great relationship with them. And. You know, then, you know, other organizations like San Diego just lied and manipulated and, and put my name in the trash can and dumped it out there on the on the streets. Like, so I was going to ask you, yeah, I was how did, ask that, you about how did that, that go? Right. So I, that that. But, you know, when you <clears throat> I heard you was like, man, if, if, you, if you had to retire with a team, you would, you know, want to retire a Raven. So in my mind, I'm like, you know, you had some great years um in san diego some good teams some great teams um great teammates some future hall of famer teammates whatever the case mm-hmm. may be i just kind of wonder you know like what happened with that man i think i could probably talk for an hour about that <laughs> that whole situation i'll try to give you the cliff notes version there's like yeah. I, I look at myself as two different stints in san diego my first six years in san diego with norv and AJ Smith and Buddy Nix and that, you know, that front office. And then when Telesco came in and McCoy and all those other things, I really don't look at myself as, as played for them during those, those three years. Uh, yeah. You know, the way it's just hard to, hard to explain. Like I'll put it like this. You guys come off an all pro pro bowl year, first team, all pro uh, pro bowl. And you're going in your last year your contract. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you're thinking, all right, like uh, this would this time as good as any is talk about a contract extension and, and retire a charger, right. right? Like I don't know, I don't know what more you need to do. So this was after year eight, and uh, you know you continue to get blown off. They don't return your calls, blah 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 blah. And then that shit sounds you know, familiar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do I know we, we all go through too. it, right? And. Yeah, I mean, you know, Telesco came from from uh, Indy, so mm-hmm. you know, uh, and that's some, that's that's what people a lot of people don't really get from uh, from our standpoint because it's people throw around a culture thing a lot, right? And obviously, we talked about from the player standpoint, like it's really about the the guys that are most respected and a lot of times getting paid the most really setting the standard. You see it with, with mm-hmm. Popovich and Tim Duncan or, you know, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan. Like it's gotta be that guy. Cause that's the dynamic in pro sports. So the best players can be getting paid 10, 15, $20 million a year. Coach probably getting five or six. So those guys got to kind of set the standard. You got to hold each other accountable. But the other yeah. side of that is, you know, the front office ownership, head coach, like how are those guys setting the standard, setting the culture? For Who sure. are they paying? When are they paying them? Are they rewarding got the right guys in the players' eyes? You know what I mean? That yeah. like all, all that matters and ties in. I think a lot of people don't see that. And and you know, it's hard to it is business, like you said, but especially when you're still in the prime of your career, like you said, you going after year eight, first team all pro, like that's that's prime years of safety. Yeah. Like you expect yeah, I mean, to be treated a certain way. And if you're not, you're gonna take it personal. Yeah, and it it was just difficult to go from January, February, March, April. And, you know, my agent walks through at the combine and they walk right by him and ignore him or yep. we give numerous calls and they don't return our calls. So off season workouts come and I'm like, they, I haven't even talked to them. Why am I going to go out of my way and do all this <laughs> yeah. stuff? So I skipped nah, all that you. stuff, skipped all that stuff. And then a week before the mandatory mini camp, it was a big, like big story. Is Eric going to show up? Is Eric going to like, of course I'm going to show up. I'm, like, I'm not going to get fined for something yeah, fine. yeah. stupid. Right. Well, Telesco gets out there on the radio and basically does an interview and says, you know, there's, you know, we're not in negotiations with Eric. We're not going to look to extend him. You know, what he's asking for is just ludicrous. You know, we can't even, we can't even come to an agreement on a price. And I'm like, I'm hearing this and I'm like, you have literally lied to the entire world we have not <laughs> we have not spoken to him spoken, once right? yeah not what i mean not once not like hi bye nothing so mm-hmm. you're basically telling the whole world i'm the bad guy i want x amount of money i'm like look i'm about to be 30 i understand age all this other crap like 
I never said anything about highest paid safety. I never said anything about other than I want to retire a charger. That's the yeah. only thing I ever said to anybody, right? right. So minicamp comes around, and after the first practice, I get up there. I wasn't even scheduled to do a press conference. I went up there and did it myself <laughs> and had it all went down, every note, everything I, I – uh, had written down and and called him out on everything he lied about. And yeah. I said, oh, wow. this will be, I said, this will be the last time I talk about my contract. I'm playing this year out and I'm moving forward. I'm moving on. And I called him out about his lies. I said, it's hard for me to even understand someone saying about money and wanting this amount of dollars when I haven't spoken to him once. My agent hasn't right. spoken to him once. So how can he say something like this? So that was like the beginning of the end. So later that afternoon, one of the little runner guys says, uh, Eric, Tom wants to see you. And I'm like, yes, he's going to cut me. <laughs> I could go somewhere, you know, someone who yeah, wants right. me, pay right. me. So I get up there in this, in this room and I kid you not, I, I don't know how I didn't jump across the table and kill this guy. <laughs> so he, so we're just, we're just kind of, he's like, you want to sit down? I'm like, no, I don't want to sit down. What do you want? Like, what, what's up? He's like, we got to stop doing this. Like we can't keep going back and forth. I'm like, you're the one that started this and lied and put out on the, in the radio that, that I want all this demands. Like, mm -hmm. wh who are you kidding? Did you not think I was going to stand up for myself? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, Eric, but he's like, Eric, I can remember like it was yesterday. And you know me, I'm not going to lie. Like I tell how it is. If right. you're a bum, you're a bum. If you're good, you're good. Like it's just it's just me. If you don't like it, I don't really care. Yeah. So so I he's like Eric. He's like you gotta listen. He's like he's like where you know it it is it is hard for a guy to get a third contract with the same team. And I and I, and as he said this, I said I was thinking to myself, I'm like it happens all the time. Like yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? Especially when they're first Especially. team All Pro. <laughs> yeah. And he's like he's like man, those guys are special. Like. They got to do, you know, th there are unique guys in this league. And, and he's like, Eric, and he looks me in my eyes. He's like, Eric, he's like, those guys that get a third contract, those guys are like Hall of Fame type guys. And we just don't think that about you. And mm -hmm. I said, I looked at him and said, this will be the last time we ever speak. I walked out. And that, those are the last words I've ever spoken to that man. Man. That's crazy, man. So I went. So, so I'll, I'll give you the fast forward note. So. The six weeks before camp, I come back to camp. And mind you, AB, you guys have been in a, in a spot for a number of years. Imagine that whole building, people you've met and they, became and close they, with. They love you. They blackballed me, bro. I walked, <laughs> I'd walk down the hallway to say hi to someone, and they would completely ignore me. Like, wow. As if I was invisible. And it's after not, eight years. I am not kidding. It, it was like. It was the worst year I have ever had to go through in my life. Just wow. literally people that you have fought for, people that you have gotten jobs for, people yeah. who got you got the DC job for. Mm -hmm. mm. Just kick me to the curb, man. I would I would have never I would have never imagined that. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, but you people, see it. You see it, people man. People in that building just like act like I would like I had never had never been there. So hey. go ahead. No, nah, I was just like I said, I'm 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 baffled by it, man. Just y'all had a, a, a good thing going, man. Um because I would I would think, you know, in my mind, you know, obviously playing with the Colts a lot of times, you know, we would meet y'all in the regular season. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. meet y'all in the postseason. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it yep. went. You know what I mean? And um just looking, you know, out from the outside looking in, you know, just seemed like you know, y'all had really all the pieces to really um, get to that 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 next place. Step, you know what I'm saying? Change. That next step. So, um, and always kind of looked at you as being one of those those guys that would a pillar retire, guy, a pillar guy that, that was would, a pillar like, guy like yeah. said, that would retire a uh, a charger man. So for yep. you to for for me to hear that man, it's 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 it's, it's crazy. But like I said, it happened, man. It sounds like a yeah. um a story of another guy that I knew that played um in Indy. Yeah, kind of played the 41. same position. Forty one, man. It was <laughs> kind of one of one of them things, man. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, man, I mean, it, it, we we go through stuff like that, and and teams bad mouth your name. But when when your daughter is in the halftime show, mm -hmm. and you get fined for watching her conduct detrimental to the team, 
for watching your daughter in the cheerleaders do a halftime show. I mean, that wow. just tells you what the organization is. Yeah, that's that, that's that's, I mean, that, that's bad ball. That just tells you right there. It's, it's bad ball. They don't run the right way. And, you know, so after that season, I didn't even know if I wanted to play anymore, quite honestly. I mean, mm -hmm. miserable every year, not happy. You've had you had teammates that wouldn't stick up for you. You had coaches not stick up for you. I mean, it, it, it was just like the everyone turned their back on you, which, you know, a lot of times the players can't stay, you know, they just can't. And, and yes, I get that. Yeah. But there were some players that could. And I remember the players that could have and they yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. and, and I always remember that. Like, yeah, they're still friends and I'm still cordial. But at the end of the day, if the roles right. were reversed, I would have stuck up I for you. I said, yeah. for you. he's that, playing. And, and, yep. You're not putting him on an R. You could travel with the team. And if not, I'm not playing. Like, yeah. that's just that's just how I am. I'm loyal. Mm -hmm. To a fault, and I'm so a ride again, die that's with my guys. Your, that's, that's part of the culture. Once yeah. again, yes, type of locker room yeah. when you're in because I, I we we've been in situations. I know Twan, you weren't still on the team, but um, we had a D coordinator one time come out, and it was his first year as a D coordinator, and he came out and he just said some, uh, just some bad stuff about a rookie cornerback, and you know, coaches, you know, rookies are rookies, but at the same time, as a coach, you don't go out and say certain things to the media. 100%. And you know, I felt like I was in a position. Uh, Vontae was still there at the time. I'm like, yo, we got to holler because this was his first year. Maybe he don't know any better. Yeah, hey, we got to holler. We got, we got, we got to set him straight. And that, mm -hmm. and that was that. And he was, he respected us. He went and apologized to the player, and went out and apologized to the media after. And that was handled. Yeah. And it was never an issue after that. But yeah. I feel like, um, you know, especially when when somebody putting you in a bad light, and the guys that know what you're about, you know what you're standing there. If you're a piece of shit, and it's like, all right, you know, forget him. But if you're a right. guy. I know from the outside looking in, I definitely respected your game, and it looked like your mm -hmm. teammates respected and loved you. Anybody oh, I sure. talked to around the league, same thing. So that's really, really odd that that would be the situation in, in, in a player like you who, you know, seemed like you took care of business on the field for sure and off the field. That's that's, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so, so then, you know, that year I was struggling about playing, and then obviously I had a bunch of teams that – that uh, were interested when I was a free agent, and then Baltimore just went out of their way and and was uh, you know when you just feel it like you feel like a team wants you, appreciates yeah. you, knows what you can bring to their organization. I mean, it's it was uh, it was something that you needed. We all want to be uh, we all want to be liked, we all want to be loved, we all want to be appreciated, right? Yep. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. and, and respected, and that's what they gave me. And you know, as as much as I wanted to play my last year out there and retire Raven, like it didn't end up there. But at least they were honest and upfront with me, and and I enjoyed literally every second from the day I signed in March of sixteen till I got yeah. cut in Jan February of nineteen. Like I I can't say a bad word about them. And when it's like right. that, I mean that's what that's what it should be like. That's sure. the way the guys should be treated. And yeah. it's not like that. And and that's the unfortunate part of this game. And you know, people want to say, well, it's just a job. Leave your emotions out there. It's not just a job, man. Yeah. These are my right. brothers out here. Right. Like mm -hmm. you, you, we, we live and die for each other. Like my, my family and four kids take a back seat for six months because they're second on the totem pole. And that's just yep. the reality of it. And, that, and that's real. And yep. yeah. And to say like, Oh, keep your emotions inside or don't worry about it. Or it's like, yeah. no, you, you can't worry <laughs> about it. Like I'm putting my life on the line for these guys right. and this team and this organization. And you're telling me, if a guy talks bad about me, I'm just going to have to take it? No, no, no. And that a, a lot of way. times, I, as I got older, I've realized this. A lot of these uh, decision makers, personnel guys, they get caught up in, in the in the hype, too. They get caught up in the names and the this mm. and the, as opposed to – because as players, you can turn the film on and be like, yo – this dude is nice. This dude is yep. um, he, he, if, okay. Sure. That guy's the highest pay. Okay, I I I, I, I get have, it. I, I see that. Yeah. I understand that. Then sometimes you'll see like maybe because of a name or a team they're playing. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That don't really <laughs> add up. And then when you sit down with the actual decision makers, you understand why those decisions are being made. Because they will sit down to tell you, oh, you know, we don't think you're a Hall of Fame guy, or it's hard to get a third contract. Like that's. Because if I'm looking at it as a DB and it's like, okay, if I can get a safety right now, like you'll be up there on the top of that mm -hmm. list as mm -hmm. far as guys I want to lock in for a long-term deal because not only is he going to handle his business on the field, but he's a great locker room guy. So, like, yep. that, I don't understand how guys – how that part of it is missed so much. And um, it, it, it's crazy. I feel, I feel like that's why, you know, more players, more former players need to be in position – of you know making decisions, you see John Lynch doing a great job out in San Fran. You see indeed, Rabel doing a really good job in uh yep. Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. yeah. 
you know, Mike Ron Rivera, he's been doing a good, he's he's got the GM and head coach job, you know, hopefully mm-hmm. get healthy soon. But you see guys like that, they are put in position to make those decisions. I feel like they miss more when it comes to like, you know, culture guys, you know, definitely. Rivera, I mean, I, they're they're afraid of confrontation, they're afraid yeah. of communication. Like yep. it's like, do you think we're like we're not we're not normal people at the end of the day? Like you can't just talk to us. <laughs> it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. The people that know how to communicate and just Get their point across face to face are the yeah. are the ones that that do that well as an organization. Done. Yeah, that's all you want. That's all you want. Somebody to shoot it to you straight, man. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. but to, to the football part, real quick, you got to get to this. Yeah, gotta get to the football part. So, um, watching a game from the outside in, um, you know, one of your strengths, I would say, is knowing what the hell is going on pre snap, knowing how to anticipate. <laughs> Uh, getting guys around you lined up, that's that's critically important, not only with what you're doing, but making sure everybody else around you is on the same page. I was reading something earlier. Um, it was kind of talking about how early you picked up on Wade's uh, system in uh, L.A. when you got out there. I don't know they were still in St. Louis, but L.A. when you got out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you go up? Like, what do you think – was it coaches from your background, or what do you think helped you the most when it came to, you know, game prepping and just being – always knowing kind of been one step ahead? Yeah, I mean, it's, guys, yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, uh, I mean, we're all, we all know, you know, we're all, we're all super gifted, right? Athletically, like if we're not, we wouldn't even have a chance in the league, right? Yeah. Uh, we're all fast. We're all can jump fairly good, blah, 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 quick. But what separated me from myself, and I knew it was just my mind and how I could process information and, and be able to just, pick up things fairly quickly, right? I could look at a defense and, you know, without even really taking notes down, I could get it. I could, I could understand and get it right then. Know the checks, know the calls within a few minutes. And then, Mm -hmm. then on top of that, writing it down and rewriting it down, like just Mm -hmm. cemented it, right? Cemented it. And, uh, you know, honestly, like when I look at a defense, I, I immediately look at what are the weaknesses of this defense? How are teams going to attack it? Like I, I look at, those things more so than the rotation or where a guy's line is he lined up in the shade is he lined up head up like all those things is like secondary when i when i when i study and and look at defense i'm looking at more as an offensive mind right. of how are the teams going to attack us That's how are right. where are the weakness if they get in this formation what is our check you know they get an empty depending on where the wide is are we going to double him are we going to check the coverage yep. to that side like all the little intricacies that, as you guys know, some defenses and some secondary coaches go through that stuff, and other times they don't. And then you get in a game, and you get in that, <laughs> yeah, you get in that situation, and you're caught with your pants down. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's what helped me. And and then as you get older and more comfortable, and you trust yourself, and you start to grow as a player, you realize that our only, our only the only way we can affect the offense is before the snap, right? Yeah. By disguising, by disguising. moving. Yeah. And and understanding what you're doing and everyone else doing and being able to manipulate what the quarterback is seeing. And and I just felt like that was a strength that we needed to do. And it started back in the indie days when we played Peyton and how many times he <laughs> would audible and check mm-hmm. that we were like, listen – if he's going to audible and check, we need to audible and check. Got or yeah, got we need to get out or get to a new pressure or reload the pressure to the other side. Like, that's what we got to get to. And going through those games and battles helped me as a player and then as a guy that could translate and, and you know, express those feelings of these are where the defenses need to go. Like, I, I agree. If, That's how you if get we more stay aggressive. Where, yeah, if we stay where we're at, we're going to just get annihilated by these annihilated. offenses. We are already just behind. Dictate it. Yeah, of exactly. course. You can't hit. You can't make plays on the ball. Like, mm-hmm. what else do you want us to do? So, <laughs> so I just felt like, you know, that's what separated me and, and made me more valuable compared to others is just the mm-hmm. mental side that I would bring to the game. Now, that's dope. So I was going to ask you, and you kind of just uh, <clears throat> spoke on it, where in your playing days, like, you know, I know it was, you know, when we played uh, you guys, when we played uh, the New-, New England Patriots, those were the weeks where I was like, okay, well, as a safety, as one of those guys on the defense, I really got to be on my A game. Not saying that I don't have to be on my A game those other weeks, but playing against these type quarterbacks, they're always going to be – it's going to be like a chess game out there. So um, what what quarterback – 
or quarterbacks was that for you or what offenses was that for you i know you said indy but anybody else out there where you really kind of had to hone in during the week yeah i mean i i i played tom i mean i think five times five or six times in my course of my career and i didn't beat him once so uh that, that's frustrating <laughs> uh peyton i always enjoyed peyton because i knew the mental side of the game was every snap like you literally every snap and if you weren't on it or if you had a slight mistake or were late on a rotation or late on a check it Taking was a touchdown advantage of that. yes mm -hmm. so those those guys brett Favre. i mean i had him i played against him late green bay my rookie year and then the jets and then minnesota so he was still firing it and and that guy just was unconscious and <laughs> It was a gun. Literally. They put him of yes. a gunslinger. Gun yes, slinger. for sure. Like, didn't matter if he was covered or not. Like, he trusted yeah. his arm, trusted his the ball. Like, it would get there. Uh, you know, I love Phillip and competing against him in practice a lot. Like Peyton, he was he was so mental, mentally into it with the with the O line. I mean, the guy made every check, every line call, every audible. Like Peyton, uh, and then playing against him, my my. Uh, Last year in Baltimore, we played him at L.A., and then we had him in the playoffs first round. And it gave me a, better, a greater appreciation of just how great Phillip is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe limited in some, time, some, some things with his arm, you know, compared to others. But the mental side and the command and the leadership, it was, it was fun. It was just fun to be in that game and be on the other side of it when I was on his side for so many years. Uh, and, then, and then you're talking about the new offenses, like with – with Mahomes and geez, Ooh. Lamar last year just completely. Oh, I, see. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it was like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I very rarely in my career where I felt like I didn't know where the ball was. Like, it, <laughs> it would, it would be, you know, he'd be going through those those reads, and yeah. he would be five steps with the ball, and I I didn't know he had it, yeah. and it yeah. was just, you know, I knew I knew he was super talented. Uh, I didn't know he would make that big of a jump that quickly. that quick, that yeah. quick, right? Oh, everybody off guard with that. I didn't, no, I didn't see MVP this this early. I saw MVP no. possibly in his, at some point in his career, but not in yeah. Shit, year one as a full time starter. Yes. Really, if you look I at mean, it. the guy. The guy is like twenty two and three as a starter. Yeah. That's it's, crazy. It's just, yeah. I mean, he sparked our team my last year there, his rookie year, and and that just shows you again, like the organization, like they completely revamped the entire offense and built it around Lamar. Yep. How many teams every year try to plug in that quarterback mm -hmm. and try to fit that quarterback in what they're yep. doing? It's like, you guys, that you don't have great. a clue. You yeah, and they, they they had a great they had great 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 front office leadership from from Ozzy Newsom for so long. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then Eric just kind of Hall stepped of Famer, in that role. Yeah. So to be I able mean, to Eric's been up. under Ozzy for twenty plus yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So we groomed him. Earned yep. his earned every everything that that he got and you know but I would I mean th Lamar Lamar our first off season and in training camp I'm not gonna lie like I love Lamar death and I still talk to him but he was having trouble completing a five yard hitch let mm -hmm. alone yeah. reading defenses and making throws on the fly so yeah. that's what impressed me think, most last year yeah. is him being able to. Oh, ID man. defense. God, defense. Know, you can yeah. you can watch film and tell when a quarterback knows what the hell's going on. Because some guys just 100%. come out and they just kind of. I feel like I see a lot of that with Baker Mayfield. Honestly, I don't feel like he understands what's really going on yeah. on the side of him. When I see Lamar, and the, obviously the defense will have to be simpler because of mm -hmm. the different oh, what, he can attack yeah. You. yeah, but he Definitely. he motions somebody out or shifts to empty. Like you could tell a blitz is coming. You know he knows exactly what's going on. That was but um, that's most impressive. But like you said, like that's what you know, playing against a player like a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, that's what it does. Like for like against a, a defensive coordinator, like you can't bring. I, I don't think you can have a whole bunch of packages because of that, uh, that that dual ability. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The read option, the things of that nature. Like that's just you need two weeks to prepare for that. If you're gonna run fire <laughs> zones, if you're gonna have cover four, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you, it's, so, it's so many responsibilities of, oh, who has the dive, who has the pitch, who has the quarterback. So you'll yep. be in meet rooms for four, yeah. for, for all, all like for all, all day. day. You know what I mean? Somebody, watch him. Somebody gotta be watching him at all exactly. times, period. Exactly. It's hard to just call man, <laughs> mm -hmm. really. But, uh, yeah. So, so um, for, hold on, let me, let, me, let me get this one in. While we yeah. on these quarterbacks, and you talked about Phil, uh, Earlier, obviously, he's on our former team, the Colts. Now, 
obviously mm-hmm. much later in his career. But what are your thoughts on him? What's your ex- expectations for him down there at the coast? Got a real good old line, two good running backs, good weapons around him, good defense. I, what, what you I expect think, from him? I, I think they're full heartedly they'll win the division and how far they go in the playoffs is up to the entire team. And and when, listen, when Phil gets hot and you protect him, it, I don't care what you deal on defense. Like he's the he problem is, is yes, he's gonna he's gonna know where the ball is going. He's gonna know where the blitz is coming from. That that's never been the problem. It's just if he can't protect him, he's not the that type of quarterback. He ain't gonna get yeah. out of the yeah, get out of trouble. Hey, Lamar Jackson. Just, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. So. <laughs> And what he's going to bring to the team is second to none. Just the belief, the, the leadership, belief. and the that's work what I want to say. He's confident. Like for me, yes. from the times, from the times you know I played him, no, he he talks trash. He's very confident in his abilities. You know what I'm saying? And and I think you know a fairly young team, man. That's what the coach need. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, I I thought it was a great, a great addition. Uh, you know, he's going to just inspire those guys. He knows the system. I mean, you're talking about the best O-line, well, arguably the best O-line in the league. Yeah. And then you're plugging in a guy that and when he's on, I mean, he's a top five, top ten quarterback and making throws all across the yard. So I expect a great season not only for him but for Indy. I mean, that that was just the one thing that's been holding them back without luck there. Yeah. Uh, you know, the defense has been – Gosh, who would have thought their defense would have been so good the last couple of years with all those young guys mm-hmm. in there? Leonard, yeah, and, the you know, yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. uh, I think the fans and the organization are, are going to be pleasantly surprised. I don't think they'll be surprised, but they're going to get more than they could have ever dreamed of with, with Phillip there. I mean, to get a guy like that is – I mean that never happens, especially yeah, yeah. now in this day. I mean, like it's like Tampa getting a guy like Tom Brady. Like Tom Brady, who would have ever right. thought that? You know, yeah, that's and wild. now they get a they get a guy like that to just run the show and <laughs> still can throw the ball as good as anybody with all those weapons. Like holy smokes, have fun trying mm-hmm. to defend that team. <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Well, shoot, man, we don't want to keep you too much longer, man. We got a couple yeah, questions, man. man, from um from from Twitter, man. Yeah. Um, we're gonna shoot them out to you, man. See what you see what you think, man. Um, one from uh Richie Perez, um, Mr. Weddle, my friend hit you up about sending a jersey to get signed, and you were awesome about it. Is that something that you do often? And also, what do you think about the Rams on hard knocks? First, uh, yeah, I, if anyone ever, uh, well. I used to. I deleted Twitter from my phone about four days ago. So if you guys ever hit me up on Twitter, I will not be responding to anytime soon just because I just couldn't handle the negativity. I couldn't Man. handle just Bad the now. landscape yeah. of this country. So, I, and honestly, I have, it has been so refreshing. Just my mind and energy and time just not focused on that crap anymore so yeah. whenever i do get back on shoot me a message and i do always do that stuff for the fans it's, it's something that i'll always do and love doing and then the rams i think the rams are going to be a surprise team i was with them last year i love their head coach i'm close with him the foundation is there the young guys got to step up i mean you lose a guy like Gurley, brandon cooks uh you know, the, you can't just say you're going to replace them with a with uh, a young, non-experienced player. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be it. tough. Got to yeah. prove it. I think their defense will be better with the new D coordinator and the system, and the, it'll be able to accentuate the the star players that they have on that defense. So, mm-hmm. but that division's tough, man. That division is tough. Yeah, it Arizona, is. Arizona, Arizona it's coming. Be a Seattle's yeah, already there. And obviously, the Niners. The Niners fresh off the Super Bowl, so yes. yeah, dog yeah, fight yeah, every yeah. week. But I wouldn't sleep on them. Uh, I think everyone's kind of. I'm sleep on them. <laughs> I'm definitely. Sleep. I don't. Believe, I don't believe in golf. I feel like um, McVay's a good, definitely a good coach, but I feel like you know, yeah. is gonna somewhat catch up to him like they did last year. Um, and then the, just those, it's gonna be hard to sustain a team and build it with those contracts. So. I don't yeah, they, they, too negative. And it's a tough crazy. division, like you said. Yep. So um you know, they you got, got some Kyler. work to do, but yeah, but most we'll see. We'll uh see. I think I think they'll listen, we had six games last year where we were three point three points or touchdown or less, and we didn't win any of them, and we went nine and seven. So yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you're on the right side of those. You make the playoffs. If you aren't, then you're not. I mean, we all know those, that's what it comes down to. It's, it's going to be, you're very rarely do you get blown out in this league. And uh, you got to come up clutch in the fourth quarter. So come down uh, two I'm hoping, drive. Uh, two yeah, minute, I'm, yeah. I, I'm hoping they they bounce back. I'll be rooting for them and the Ravens for sure. Cool. One more, man. We're gonna let you get out of here. Um, this is from at B point five seven five. Will, um, do you come back? No, my fault. Is at B point five seven five. Will you come back to coach and be more? And I will add some to that. Um, if not be more, do you have, do you see coaching in your future at all? That's a good question. And, you know, I thought about it for me personally, it, nothing, none of that's going to happen for at least a few years down the road. Uh, my kids, uh, as you guys know, when, when you play and it, everything revolves around you, what you mm. need to get done for the day in the off season, what do I need to get done? And then, then we can have family time. Right. And mm-hmm. as much as you try to mitigate that of I'll get up at five and get it done. It, it's just, it's, it's time. And I, and I've sacrificed my family for 13 years. So for me to say, I'm going to go coach and, and leave my family or bring them like, it's just not relevant right now. Uh, and I don't know when that time is going to come. And honestly, doing the management and scouting is a little bit more intriguing and, and I think would be more of a challenge than just going in and trying to be a coach. Cause putting the team together. Yeah, yeah. Like, like doing all those little things and really looking at a guy what's inside his chest, right? What does he have a heart? What's his mind? Like, you know, what drives him? Like all those things that get looked past in a lot of teams, it's all height, weight, speed and this and that. Yeah, and It's like, do you not, do you not look at what the film says? Do you show us like yeah, <laughs> they it's, don't. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like they're, they're all trying the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. They're trying mm-hmm. to all cover themselves if they're wrong. And, and all these and anal- just, all these analytics and all yeah, this yeah, other yeah, crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. All that stuff is hogwash. Yeah, I, I definitely but, think you'll be a good ass GM. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So and sure. then and then I would have all the people that work with me will be all ex players. I can tell yeah, you that right now. Good. And and I won't. I won't have no one, no one that if you never played, don't even come talk to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, sorry. Like there are some great coaches out there that haven't played and I'm not disrespecting mm-hmm. them in yep. that way. But if I'm running my program and you haven't been in the fire, then how are you going to go scout this kid or no? How yeah, are you gonna that's, know? Real. that's real. I mean, that's... You, you could say is, you know, as much as you want, but at the end of the day, you were never in that position. You were never taking on a double team, right? You were never mm-hmm. making yeah. an open field tackle and trying to tell me that I got a shuffle or I got a <laughs> sprint <laughs> shuffle. Or like, you don't know. Okay? You don't know. I'm going to do it yeah. my coach. Yeah. Gonna try, I'm going to try to do it, but at the end of the day, I'm going to get him down however I can. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm going right? to shoot get... my shot or yeah. hopefully my, 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 my yeah. comrades is on the way. You know what I'm saying? That's the fact. As long as you make them stop or whatever. So, so I don't know. Like, uh, I think someday I'll, I'll get back into it. Uh, but I look forward to coaching my son on Pop Warner. I look forward wow. to supporting my girls in basketball and cheerleading and being there and not missing anything. Yeah. Uh, so until that, until the kids are out, you know, it's, it's going to be a while, but you never know. You never know. Yeah. And there's no team in San Diego and I built this beautiful <laughs> home, my dream home here. And yeah. I want to enjoy it. Not yeah, looking at sure. pictures from a thousand miles away. I hear that. Nah, man. <laughs> so, yeah, we get a job in Green Bay. Nah, it's great. Nah, I'm good yeah, nah. straight off that. <laughs> great. Nah, man. But uh, once again, man, we appreciate it. Um, definitely Hell a lot yeah. of conversation, man. The insight. Um, and once again, man, appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Always good to appreciate see you guys, man. and keep in touch, man. It's always good to see familiar faces that that you love and respect, man. We're all we're all brothers, and we're all we're all family once we get out. So. We gotta take care of each other. Yes, sir. Uh, always. All right, man. Take care. Right, Stay boys, healthy man. out there. Be good. You too.